I remember when I was uh, a, a new believer and I would hear phrases like the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. I, not even as a new believer. Honestly, it was for decades as a believer. I would read in the Bible, like kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Like it, it, it meant nothing to me, the word kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guessing it's true for a lot of people mm -hmm. because it just becomes this, uh, I can't relate to it. I've never been under a king. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a country where there's a president. You feel free to obey him, disobey him, whatever, you know, mock him. Yeah. I, you know, this, and so this concept we get in scripture of the kingdom, I, it's so good that we study this because we live in a different place. Mm -hmm. And the idea of a king is that, you know, sometimes we go, okay, I'm so glad that Jesus is Lord because I'm under his protection. Mm -hmm. But does that, but do you understand that you're, you're under a king's protection, but you're also under his rule? Mm -hmm. Like they, they didn't separate that back then. They were mm -hmm. glad that this person was king, but that meant that they were going to obey this king or there, were, mm -hmm. uh, or there were consequences. Yeah. And so it is a very important lesson to understand what does it mean that we're a part of the kingdom of God now. Mm -hmm. He is truly our king, and he protects us, he loves us, he cares for us, um, but we also come under his authority. Yeah. And so I think it, it'd be good on a practical level to spend time with the person or people you're discipling and say, are, are there areas of your life that are not really under his reign, that you've not submitted to his reign and his rule? Like to really dig in there, are uh, your use of possessions, is he king over that? Or is that just kind of an area of your life where you kind of do what you want and you've got your relationship with Christ over here? Or relationship, and there's all kinds of different areas of our life to say, okay, is everything under his rule? I mean, this is, this is a, a part of the grand picture here in scripture. We've got this promise of the king that Barnes' lesson talks about all throughout the Old Testament. And then the beauty is in the New Testament, the king is here and he lives among us for 30 plus years, the king, Jesus in the flesh, but then he leaves. And he gives us this promise that he's coming back. Mm -hmm. And so we live this, we live in between the times, so to speak, of the king's first coming, and the king's second coming, where we are living in submission to him, but the world around us is not completely in submission to him by any means, yeah. but we know he's coming back. And so that's even where understanding the kingdom helps us understand disciple making. Like disciple making is advancing a kingdom. It's proclaiming the rule and reign of the king who's coming back. It's calling people to submit yeah. to the king. And as we do that, we're in a sense advancing his kingdom to the ends yeah. of the earth, which is a yeah. powerful picture of disciple making. Yeah. Like we yeah. want to advance his kingdom, yeah, it's proclaim like, this king. It's like bringing other people into this army. Yeah. You, yeah, you know, it's like, sure. okay, I'm going to add to this. You, you know, that's the discipleship picture mm -hmm. is like, God wanted his kingdom expanded. Mm. It's like, man, I want people from every nation yes, yes. as a part of this army, you know, me as the king, me as mm -hmm. the ruler. And, and so we too, you know, we're supposed to distinguish ourselves. Like you said, mm. the world isn't thinking that he's the king. Mm. So we as the people of God, we're supposed to live differently and go, well, we don't live that way. We recognize mm. there is a king. In fact, he's mm. returning. And so we're busy doing this. Yeah. And this is how we stand out is that just like Israel, they were obedient to these laws that the other people mm. didn't follow mm -hmm. because Yahweh was not their God. So mm. like, why would I put myself under those mm. commands? In the same way, it's like other people aren't going to make disciples to further the mm. kingdom of Christ, but we are. Why? Because we're distinguished. We're yeah. a unique group of people. We want to be doing this when he returns. Yeah, you know, there's so much imagery there. Like the church is, I look at the church as like an outpost of the kingdom. This is what the kingdom looks like in, in a community. And then we as our lives, and this is scriptural, like we're ambassadors of the king. And so we don't, we don't just sit back and coast through Christianity while we wait for the king to come back. No, we are advancing this kingdom because we long for it even when, when it's earlier in an earlier lesson when when the when jesus says this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed as a testimony mm -hmm. to all nations and then the end will come so proclaim this gospel of the kingdom keep that focus central in your relationship with the person people you're discipling are we are we working for the advancement of this kingdom we're not just sitting back and soaking in mm -hmm. who are we proclaiming the king to just keep coming back to that because if we don't we'll, we'll be missing missing the point in the end that disciple making is about the advancement of a kingdom